So I just wanted to have a presentation for people when it comes to uh, Newtonian reflectors, because people keep asking me what type of scope should they get and everything like that. And when you start throwing different names at them, they, uh, they get a little confused. And uh, I always thought the Newtonian is the simplest one, but it's amazing how many people don't know about it. So yeah, as we all know, there are three major categories of telescopes. Of course, the first one ever created was the refractor, and that was Galileo, and other people had landscopes before that too, and he was the first one to put it up to the sky, at least that we know of. And uh, that's a nice one, but you know, a little on the expensive side. Then, of course, you have your compound telescopes, the schmidt cassegrains the muscatov cassegrains and all the other type of uh, variations. And they're really great scopes. And of course, they are costly. Uh, they have not only the main mirror, but you also have a corrector plate and other uh, things that are affecting the, um, the optics. And then you, of course, have the simple, humble Newtonian, invented, of course, by Sir Isaac Newton, where it comes the name. And you just simply have your primary, your secondary, and your eyepiece. It, when given per given a cost per inch of aperture, it is the least expensive telescope. So of course, telescopes need a mount and reflectors can be used on any type of mount. It can be on an out azimuth mount. It could be on the Dobsonian style. I mean, everyone calls them Dobsonian telescopes. They're really not. They're re Newtonian reflectors on a Dobsonian but they do make a difference in the mirror when you have the thinner uh, port glass mirror. You really don't wanna have that on, on a uh, equatorial mount. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Then of course you have the equatorial mount where you have the ability to do many different things to find things using setting circles, photography, et cetera. All right. And as I always do try to recommend people to, if they can afford it, to get an equatorial mount because it is easier to find objects. You get to use your setting circles. And if you want to make that jump to astrophotography, it's doable. It's, it's not a super big jump. You can get used equatorial mounts for reasonable cost and be less than if you buy the entire Dobsonian scope brand new. So again, it's up to the individual and their budget and what they're trying to do. All right, so hang on a second. I'm going to move this over. Can I do that? No, it's not going to work. Hang on. It's blocking off the top part. Can you guys see the top portion or is it blocked by the? No. OK, so anyway, Newtonian uh, are different uh, from the standard Dobsonian. The OTA, it most has to do with the, the glass that's inside, it's a thinner glass. So it's the Newtonian mirror is one to 16 mirror thickness to diameter, whereas the uh, Dobsonian is, uh, what's it called, yeah, one to six ratio, so it's thinner. And the Dobsonian mount is very inexpensive and easy to make yourself. You don't actually have to, um, Buy one. I know a lot of uh, colleagues of ours and others have made the uh, their own Dobsonian mount. I think Rocky, you made yours, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. And so and there are John's made them. And John's made them too. So these the plans to do that are out on the internet. So if that is the thing, then of course you with a mount like that, you're going to have to use your finder to find objects, and of course to, uh, to go star hopping. Uh, it, although there are plans on the internet for using an altimeter and a, for making your own as in a circle, and you could try to find objects that way using Stellarium or some other app on your phone. And um, uh, I, I'm trying to remember there was a gentleman that, that joined the club recently that had his Dobsonian, uh, Bob, shoot, can't remember his name. But in any event, he was out there and he was doing that. And, uh, he was finding objects quite, quite uh, quickly and effectively. So cost, that's where we really get into things. So a six inch Newtonian on an equatorial mount on a decent one will be uh, 400 to 800 
you get a very nice telescope for 650 to 700. If you really want to get scope plus a go-to mount, you're going to approach $1,000. That's just the way it is. An eight inch equatorial, a Newtonian on an equatorial is uh, 650 to 2000. It's a bigger spread. And again, a go-to mount with the equatorial is going to cost you anywhere from 20, 1200. And actually I've seen some of the boosts now with the price increases uh, over 3000. And sometimes when you're doing this, you might want to buy the optical tube assembly, the OTA and the mount separately and that you might be able to put things together for a lower cost, to, especially if you go on to cloudy nights or some other site and get one or both the scope um, used, all right? Four inch refractor, uh, that can really go, depending on whether you're getting a um, standard uh, air-spaced acromat, uh, acromat, which can be 400 to 450, go to again, 1300 to 3,250. Or if you go to the APO at refractor and then the optical tube only, you can get, depends how hot you want to get in terms of how good the resolution, it can be anywhere from 1,400 to 6,000. And sometimes if you're looking for different companies, 1,300 to 5,200. 5, and an eight inch compound telescope, so like, like one of the things from Celestron or wherever will be, 1300 to 5200 depending on the mount what bells and whistles you want so you can see on an average cost per inch of aperture you're going to get by with a larger aperture and a much lower cost for your newtonians now uh, these have come out in the last four or five years and this is from um uh, what's gonna call it the uh star sense telescopes and they are very, very interesting. Celestron has this prism-like setup. You put your phone on it, it looks at the sky, and when you have their program in, it has a little arrows to tell you which way to move your mount to get the object you want. And that is really very good. So this allows somebody, and I don't know if anyone's ever, I think they have it, yeah, they do have it on a Dobsonian. Uh, and reflectors, it allows you to find the objects quite quickly. And I uh, got a friend of mine uh, back in Illinois that has one of these. He has an eight inch and he really loves it. He says it's just a great, great telescope. So the five inch Newtonian star sense is 479. The eight inch Dob is 799. 10 inch Dobsonian, a little over a thousand. And the four inch refractor is 469. So it's a really good way to do this. They have an active user group on Celestron's website, and they're constantly updating the software, which you can download to your phone. So it's a, it's a good buy. And you know, we've always been telling people that the best scope for them to get is a Dobsonian. But I tell you, I would, I'm, I've been telling, pointing people towards these star sense scopes because one of the things I often get when people come to me they're, they're about a telescope, they're like, I can't find anything. <laughs> and this is a good way to utilize the app on your phone and the telescope to find the objects for, it, for you. Okay. So Newtonian's advantages. It's a simple open o OTA. I mean, it's lighter and compared to other my, uh, telescopes. I uh, was hoping that um, we had a few of the guys that were you know, you know, carrying a lot of their compound uh, scopes up there. Uh, they're heavy. I mean, I see, uh, <laughs> uh, what's we'll call it? Uh, well, Danny was moving his around and then uh, Ken and uh, it just, they're heavy. Uh, I had to help Ken with uh, his because it was uh, over 85 pounds. And it's, you know, as, we, as we're getting older, it's a little bit work. And if it's a teenager, that's a lot of weight to carry too. So the, the Newtonian's light. And uh, like I said, I think my six inch weighs 11 pounds and my eight inch weighs 18 pounds. So it's pretty good. Relatively inexpensive, can be used in any type of mount, no chromatic aberration. And it's good for astrophotography and other specialized purposes, chromatography, spectrography, spectrography rather, luminosity measurements, et cetera. Okay, disadvantages in the Newtonian. 
it should be collimated every time it's moved. And this takes about five minutes now using the uh, current easy to operate laser collimators. And they're only about $30. Now, the bad side about that is what happens if the laser collimator gets out of focus or out of collimation. And it can happen if you drop it or something like that. But there are nice uh, YouTube uh, videos to show you how to recollimate it uh, using a very simple device you can make. Or if you have a vise, you can do it pretty easily too. Okay. It does have coma aberration near the edge, okay, which is more prominent as you get to faster telescopes with shorter focal lengths, especially F5 and shorter. And so you can minimize this using a coma corrector and they're not that expensive now. So you can get a decent one for about $100 and you put that between your eyepiece and your uh, uh, secondary and you get a good flat field. Uh, now the secondary mirror blocks some of the light and that's a disadvantage over the refractor. But again, the compound telescopes have that same problem. Uh, changes in ambient temperature and winds can cause air turbulence within the telescope too, because it is open and it's not closed like a refractor or a compound telescope. And I'm, I'm just gonna put a picture on the, uh, our club website when I was out uh, last week observing, uh, early in my observing session, it was getting pretty windy and I was taking an image of M10, a globular cluster, and you can definitely see the wobble in that. <laughs> so it's a good uh, exercise to show you like, yeah, that's, that can happen. Now, sometimes the eyepiece gets in an awkward position, especially if you're getting to a bigger telescope on a you know, reasonably high mount. So sometimes it requires a small ladder or step stool or a counterweight for your eyepiece if you rotate it to have the eyepiece in a good location, then you change the balance, and so you have to put a counterweight. Now, I actually have done that, where I have uh, a variable weights I can put into a piece of PVC tubing with a magnet on the end and it sticks to my metal tube. So that's pretty nice. It, it works out. And the mirrors have to be cleaned periodically, usually every three to four years. And it's, you just got to be careful. It's not that difficult. All right. And that is my presentation.